All right, welcome back to Mr. P. Helps with Calculus. This is Unit 2, Day 5. We're going to be exploring differentiability, what makes a function differentiable, and we're going to be talking about what a derivative graph would look like. We're going to do that first. If I give you an original graph, you should be able to tell me what the derivative graph looks like. Well, you should already know by now that derivative graph is just a graph of the slope. So we're looking at the slope at different points, and then we're drawing a graph. This happens to be a quadratic graph right here. This point right here, the easiest one for me to start with, has a slope of 0. So I know this graph will be here at 0. The further I go to the right of this vertex, the bigger the slope gets. So as I go further to the right, the slope gets greater and greater and greater. The further I go to the left, the slope gets less and less and less and less. And everything left of this point would have a negative slope. So you can see that this linear graph, so yeah, the, the derivative of a quadratic is a linear graph. And that will make more sense when we get into the rules later on. But that's something to take note of. That yeah, quadratic turned into a linear and that will always happen. Now this time we had a linear graph, which the derivative graph also happens to be linear. And we'll talk about that in a second. So this gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But... So the slope is actually a constant. The slope does not change the entire time. So whatever this slope is, and it looks kind of like the slope is 1, I'm just going to kind of assume that, then it would be a constant rate for the derivative. And that will always be the case. Linear pieces will always have constant derivatives. What I mean by that is linear lines just going horizontally. That will always occur as well for good reason. Now, the next one, we have e to the x, which is exponential. So now, e to the x is a very, very special equation. Uh, e to the x, and e, you should know, is uh, Euler's, rule, Euler's number, uh, happens to be made for a very specific reason, because it's the most you can absolutely compound $100. If you compound it at 100% interest, that'll be the absolute most that you could possibly make if you compound it every single split second. Okay, that was just my quick explanation of Euler's number. You can look at... Uh, other videos to see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, so what's special about Euler's number is the fact that basically it's its own derivative. So this number right here, that happens to be, that slope happens to be the exact same place as where E is, which is about 2.718, if my memory serves me right. Uh, don't quote me if I'm wrong by that. But it is a irrational number. It goes on forever. Euler's number never ends. And you could say that the slope here is about 1, so that would be a slope of 1. But what happens here is the slope at every place, this just happens to be the only graph here where the slope of every place happens to be exactly itself. And that just kind of works out nice and perfectly because that's what Euler's number basically is. Now, over here we have root x plus 1, f of x equals Okay, I guess maybe I, I changed the equation itself. So we, we, we changed it to e to the x, and therefore the derivative of itself is itself. Uh, root x plus 1 would have looked totally different. Not sure why that's there. All right, so we have this graph over here. So we have a slope of 0, so that point goes there. Slope of 1, so that goes there. You notice the slope is always getting less and less and less and less and less as you go further to the right of this point, and it's getting more and more and more and more and more all the way up to that point. So that's why the... It goes up like this, and then back down, and then back up again, until it gets to about a slope of zero again. Now, my, my graph isn't perfect. It's just a close estimate, keep in mind. All right, this time we have a constant. So if we have a constant right here at, let's say this f of x ends up being 5. So if this is 5 right here, that's a constant line, then the slope will always be zero. So numbers will always be zero. I'm going to look at the next one. There are three places where the slope is zero. And this will be really important later on when we get in the first derivative test. Uh, these are the three places where the slope is zero. So I put those three points here, here, and here. Let's call those A, B, and C. Those are the three times when the slope is zero. Now, every point going up to this the slope is getting it's really really big slope and then it gets less and less and less and less and less and less and it really quickly gets less until it gets all the way to zero 
So this actually slopes down really, really quickly. And then the slope gets, you know, it's going down. It's it's going down faster, 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 faster until about right here. Then it's going down less, less, and less, and less. This point right here is what we call a point of inflection. Something, once again, will become very important later on. That is the point at which the slope of this graph stopped getting going down more and started going down less. So it's switched. This place right here is also a point of inflection. It's going bigger, 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 bigger slope, and then it's becoming less, 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 until so it gets to here. Bigger, 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 less, 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 till it gets back to zero. And then it's going to be go down by more and more and more. It's going to go more and more and more negative as you go further to the right because it's going down quicker and quicker. Okay, so uh, number seven and eight, so you can kind of get the idea. This is slope is really big negative and it gets less and less and less and less until it approaches a slope of zero. It never really hits zero. So technically that is zero is going to be a horizontal asymptote for both that y equals zero. And then same thing for this. It's got the biggest slope here and then it gets less and less and less until it gets closer and closer to a slope of zero. All right. Now talking about differentiability, when is a function differentiable? Well, there's three main ways that a function isn't differentiable. There is corners, cusps, and vertical tangent lines. Now, why is that? Slopes have to change gradually. They cannot change instantaneously. This piece on this absolute value, this looks like absolute value of x, yep, sure is. It's going negative. It's going down by negative one, so it stays negative one at a constant rate, the slope, and then it instantly switches to a slope of one. But then what about this point right here? Is that a slope of negative one or positive one? Well, it's neither. It's not, it doesn't really even make any sense whatsoever. There really is no tangent line at this point. This is not differentiable at this point. It is in every other place, just not at that one place. So if I were going to draw the graph, I would have put open circle here, open circle here for the derivative graph because f prime zero does not exist. That is what we call a corner. It's exactly what it looks like. It's literally a corner of the graph. Anytime it takes a sharp change, that is not differentiable. There is no slope. There is no tangent line at that point. Now, it could be a, a sharp change like this where it curves. These are usually going to happen when you have powers of, of fractions like this, x to the two-thirds power. This is called a cusp. It's very similar to a corner. It's getting less and less. It's not staying constant, though. It's getting more and more negative, so it's going to become sharper and sharper. And you can see that this is going towards infinity. And then at the beginning, it's going to go like, oh, whoops, sorry, it's, it's already there. It's going to be very high because I forgot it's positive. So it's a positive slope. And so this is negative slope, but this is positive slope because it's going up. So it's a very big positive slope. It's going to get less and less and less and less as this tapers off until it gets to about a slope of zero, which it never will reach because that's technically that horizontal uh, asymptote. All right. Um, we've talked about corners. we talked about cusps. There is one more um, type of differentiability that makes it not differentiable, I should say. Uh, these are the rules for differentiability, and that would be vertical tangent lines. Anytime you have a function that goes straight up and down like this, that also does not have a tangent line. Therefore, it's not differentiable at that point. So this, this line here, progress, this gets go bigger, 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 until it goes all the way up until infinity. The slope keeps getting larger. The slope is kind of large here. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger it starts to get really 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 big really really quickly that would be this graph notice it goes up into infinity and then it starts going up positive again you know really really bigger just like that so yeah these two graphs kind of, they will never hit so basically what we've learned here is that it's derivative graph 
has to be continuous. Now, if I go back over the other rules, you see how this is two different pieces. It's not continuous. It breaks. It actually has a jump discontinuity. And this one also has infinite discontinuity. And same with this one. This is not a continuous derivative graph. The derivative graph has to have no breaks. You see, it does have a break right here at zero. What are you going to say? Because both sides are approaching x equals zero, but it doesn't actually ever hit it. It's a vertical asymptote right there. So that technically exists for all functions. Now, I know this isn't really a fourth and final rule. So basically, what we've just learned is that a function must be continuous in order for it to be differentiable. That is actually one of the main requirements. If it's not continuous, then it cannot be differentiable. All right, I think that pretty much covers them all. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.